timeouts, playing zone, staying out of foul trouble will be, uh, I think, very important for an early start for Butler. Starting lineup sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Villanova led by Colin Gillespie, 18 points, a season-high five three-pointers against Georgetown Butler. They only had their full group practice for the first time on Sunday. Again, their lone game three weeks ago just prior to Thanksgiving. Aaron Thompson been a distributor in the past, but a career-high 21 points in their lone win against Western Michigan. Jeffrey Anderson, Joe Lindsay, Evan Burroughs, our referees. We tip things up in Philadelphia. Yeah, great matchup from the point guard position. Defensive-minded Aaron Thompson, of course, on the savvy Colin Gillespie. So it's the Wildcats. And an early score for Justin Moore. Uh, and, and I like that early on because Villanova's going to shoot a lot of threes. So you're going to play and protect the three-point line. But Justin, at that particular moment, off the rip from the beginning of the game, ball on the deck, attack the rim. Well, we know that Villanova, one of the more efficient offensive teams in the country, is Jair Bolden hits from three. A transfer from South Carolina. They might be trading threes for a good chunk of the night. Well, and also controlling tempo, I think, is it very important for Butler. Um, this is a team that doesn't score a lot of points last year. Top near the bottom of 68 points a game. See Colin Gillespie again getting to the basket. So ball control possession is going to be very important for this Butler team. Villanova again 5-1 and one on the year. First three scheduled home games were canceled or postponed. So this is their home opener. Both play St. Joe's Temple in DePaul is their first game since Friday. Seems like a short layoff compared to what Butler's having to go through. <laughs> Basically resetting, right? I mean, they're, they're starting from scratch again. Well, it's hard to prepare for anything like this. Timer winding down. And getting to the rack is Jacoby Coles, the freshman from Denton, Texas. Well, I tell you what. Early on, it looks as though the time off hasn't affected the Bulldogs. A nice three-point shot, handling it three-court. Three-fourths uh, court press by Villanova and still being able to get to the basket and finish. Two baskets on their first two possessions. One swatted off the rim. And the second effort is a jumper from Jeremiah Robinson Earl, the sophomore who's picked up his game this year to give the Wildcats a 6-5 lead. Butler finished fifth Big East last season. Losing their top two scorers, Kamar Baldwin, Sean McDermott, their sixth man, Jordan Tucker. Villanova only lost, it's a big one, but Sadiq Bay. And that puts a little bit more emphasis on what Gillespie has done this year. And we, we've heard from Jay Wright, it's just the leadership that Gillespie has displayed through the first couple weeks of the season. But the interesting part about Jay and his program is that we always talk about next man up, but the player development allows you to, once you lose a key component via the draft or graduation, oh, great shot right there off the dribble by Bolden. You're able to replace that with someone that's in the waiting, that's in the arms waiting. So that's the whole development aspect we talked about. And let's go back to the shot. Again, out of bounds, underneath, execution early for this Bulldogs team is on point, on time. Tell you what, Bolden may have struggled from the field against Western Michigan last month. Six of 15 in his first two shots today. The excitement of getting back on the court, how do you contain that? Butler has, you know, the Bulldogs have done that very well early on because you can be, sometimes that nervous excitement can get you out of control a little bit early, but we haven't seen that, so... Uh, Hats off to the Bulldogs and the players for being prepared to play without expending a lot of energy based on that cycle. Boy, even though it might be tough to keep the guys engaged in a layoff like that, the preparation seems like it was on point. Gillespie backing down against Thompson, sips it to the outside. And the throw down from Cole Swider. Excellent play by Swider, but also... Jeremiah Earl sealing off his man, opening up the baseline for Swider to get that easy two. Tie game. Efficient start. Beautiful. Beautiful. Chuck Harris with the finish. Well, it's funny. When we talked to Coach Jordan, he was like, I don't know what to expect. Yeah. You know, offensively, defensively from our team, we know what we have to do. 
can we execute it early is the question. I think he's answered a little bit. Of, he got his answers a little bit of, a little early in this game. So Robinson Earl with just the second miss for Villanova. Butler's been perfect for the field. Four for four. Five lead changes in the first three minutes of the game. Slater. Started here on the perimeter. Holden steps back. And he's off the mark for the first time tonight. Offensive board for the Bulldogs. Bryce Enzi, good to see him grabbing the board. Tweaked his ankle against Western Michigan. Another offensive rebound. It's Bolden drawing the contact. He'll shoot two. The energy there for Butler early. Two chances that time. Offensive rebound. Kind of staying with it. And when you have an opportunity, and the shot was great on the kick out. Nova not able to find an identified man to block out. Bulldogs able to take advantage of it. Boulder originally from New York City. His third stop played at George Washington and South Carolina, one season in Columbia. You know, Butler's a team, I mentioned that they might be trying to match Villanova in terms of three point shooting. They needed a three point shooter. And Bolden might fit that. Forty-one percent from deep with South Carolina last year. In today's game, you have to be able to spread the floor. You know, but that's a catch and shoot. And the guy that can hit it off the dribble in transition. That's just the everyday part of college basketball. Slider off the shot fake, and eventually gets turned over on a travel by the Wildcats. But how about this start? The 11-8 Butler up early. Uh, the Butler Bulldogs showing no ill effect of being off up three points. But offensive possession here, I want you to take a look. This is Butler basketball. The middle of the lane is wide open. Jeremiah Earl is too far connected with his man. And as a result, because you don't really have a lot of ball pressure, the execution on time, on target. Harris able to get a backdoor cut. This is something that Coach Jordan talked about. Be patient on offense. Do what we do. Let's not get sped up. Now we have a chance to be in this game early, working to perfection so far. Villanova. All eight of their points have come in the paint. Jeremiah Robinson, Earl, sophomore. Well, you know what that does too, Alex, is that early on, instead of taking long jump shots, it doesn't allow Villanova off those misses to get out and run. So now what you're doing is controlling tempo early on by trying to get the basketball inside. And even if you miss, your defense is able to get back and get set. That's been a phenomenal start shooting-wise for the Bulldogs. Bolden. Three again. <laughs> Why not? But that one was off of multiple passes. It swung to the opposite side of the court. Bolden that time was able to square his body up, catch in rhythm, and knock in that shot. They're already in the double figures. We're not even five minutes into the game. Moore steps back. And <laughs> I don't know if it's the lack of crowd in this building or whatever, but these guys can't miss. Well, it's very similar to Villanova being at Georgetown in their last game, and Georgetown really came out hot. They utilized going inside to open up three-point shooting. Eventually, Villanova caught on. But right now, Butler is getting everything they want on the offensive end. Keep shooting. I can't even call it a young man, the graduate transfer. 13 points out of Butler. 17. Well, I, you know what? It's great offense by Butler, but I know Coach Jay Wright can't be happy because the ball is moving around the perimeter too easy. They're getting the kind of shots that they want because the pressure on the ball handler or passer is just not there early in this game. Extra pass from Dixon to Slater, and around the horn it comes. Robinson Earl, entry to Dixon. Four on the timer. Turns. Baby hook is good. Good patience. That time, Dixon, if he can give you this when he comes in the game, he gives you a post presence. A guy that can score big body inside. And he showed a little bit of patience that time to get to his jump hook. Dixon, the redshirt freshman. As this gets tipped out by Moore. <laughs> All freshman team last year, Justin Moore. Coming off a game in which he struggled more, 
worst scoring game of the season but was the leading rebounder, finding other ways to contribute. Here's Enzi for the Bulldogs. Marquis Hastings and back around to Jire Bolden. Five on the timer. Lowers the shoulder and it's an offensive foul. Yeah, great defensive possession that time by Villanova. One, Colin Gillespie got caught on Enzi. They couldn't get the ball. And this excellent anticipation taking away the right hand of Bolden by Earl to pick up that offensive foul. Butler by five. And Gillespie running point. And Robinson Earl rises from 18 and knocks it down. He played extremely well, but he was the most outstanding player in the 2K Empire Classic games. You know, 23 points a game, but shown the op that, that he can step out behind the three-point line and be comfortable to knock down that shot. So it's ever improving in his offensive game. This will be another offensive. This time against Aaron Thompson. This time, you know, that's when coaches always talk about being under control, come to a jump shot, jump stop, make the play, make the pass, and not discipline in that particular turnover that time. Brandon Slater standing his ground. What did he have a great game off the bench against Georgetown? Yep. Finished plus 15 in the 17 minutes he played against the Hoyts. Well, how many times have you seen players just kind of develop in front of our eyes? The more minutes, the more comfortable they get just doing the little things to help a team win. And then when it's their time to kind of get major minutes, they're prepared mentally to do their job. Here's Laval Jordan. Boy, it was fascinating talking to him, wondering how the Bulldogs were going to approach this game. You get thrown right into the teeth of Big East play. Out of a three-week hiatus, there's a foul underneath on the loose ball. But uh, I'll be curious to see. I mean, you have not only this game, but for, for this Butler team, you know, how do you approach getting back into conditioning? He was joking with us that, like, the guys were... Wick and tired after what? Ten minutes on court? No, the funny part is that it, you know, a lot of bricks, a lot of balls uh, yes. were hitting the backboard from the free throw line just because the rhythm and the touch wasn't there. And But this is an unusual year. Things are going to be a lot different, so you have to try to adjust on the fly and be as prepared as you can be. Robinson Earl knocks one down from three to tie the game at 17 apiece. Seven points now. Five points, excuse me, for Robinson Earl. That's Seven, I had it right. That's First right. Time. Second two three-point shot came into this game for 16, so feeling comfortable stepping behind the line, especially, the, you know, that catch and shoot when it swings to him. It's Chuck Harris, the freshman. Nice move from Harris and gets the roll. This has been a fun game from the get-go. 19-17, Butler. Chuck Harris, who had seven points in his Butler debut last time out. Here's Robinson Earl again from three. Back of the iron, and the rebound pops all the way back out to midcourt. It bounces out of play. But it's the Bulldogs who have the edge in the first half. Bolden, 13 of Butler's 19 points to start. Yeah, a little bit better than fine. I would think the Brooklyn, New York native have 15 points against Western Michigan right now. Just filling it from behind our three for three gives you an added boost. This is a young man that if he comes in and can do this consistent, we're not saying get 13 points all the time in the first half, but you mentioned this, provide the three-point shooting. That opens up space. It, it allows Enzi and Golden to kind of do their thing inside, and defenses can't kind of sag back in. And the more comfortable he feels in this offense, I think the better he'll play, which also, again, helps his teammates. Now, I, I don't want to be speaking out of turn here, but something tells me Butler's not going to win a lot of games if Aaron Thompson is going to be relied upon to be the leading scorer. Maybe, maybe not. I don't but, 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 but Aaron, and they know that Aaron, even his high school career, if you go back to where he's from in 
beautiful pass inside the Indy in the DMV, Baltimore, D.C. area. He wasn't known for that. He was known for his leadership, yeah. his toughness. So that's what he does here. He'll opportunistic score when he has to be, but he understands how to run a team. And that's the beauty of having the leadership from Thompson. Same can be said for Gillespie right. on this Villanova team. Nice pass to find Robinson Earl right in front of the cup. Beautiful high-low, but again, the movement of the basketball quick enough for the defense not to be able to get, you know, keyed in on one player. Excellent pla pass over the top from Samuels. Enzi uh, turned the corner with a nice drop step on Jeremiah Earl. All right, back with you. <laughs> Unfortunately, no audio from sight. We are here in our Los Angeles studio, so we'll do the best that we can. So they going to hear us. Yeah, exactly. Well, oh, there we go. Just in time. See, much even better. the audio made sure they didn't want that to happen. Uh, that's, <laughs> nobody needs just the two of us. Bryce Enzi called for the foul there. So all that squared away. See, even our audio crew, they, you know, they're in. Preseason form, not mid-season form yet. With this format, you gotta give hey, them a little 2020, love. man. Hey, listen, listen. Everything has to be accounted for. I mean, in regards to adjustments, everything, everybody. So, when things kind of happen sideways, you just kind of just, just take it in stride exactly. and say it's 2020 and adjust to it, and be, things will be fine. Entry to Moore here. Oh, what a move by Moore, and he knocks down the three. Chuck Harris had no chance. Well, I mean, but Chuck was in great position. You did what you wanted to do. If you're Harris, you took away the drive. You contested the shot, but when you're Justin Moore at 6'4", you shoot over the top. Somebody at 6'2", a slight advantage, I, I hmm. believe. Here's Thompson, already with five assists on the night. Crossing over, picking up his dribble, locating Harris. Couldn't get it to go. Well, that was good defense by Dixon to stay solid and not reach down at the end on Thompson. Long two wouldn't go for Moore. But there's a foul on Thompson going after the rebound. You get a sense right now that Villanova has kind of weathered the early storm and kind of settling in a little bit more on the defensive end of the court. Do you see the block shot right here? Well, Caleb Daniels, and, you know, sometimes it takes time. They play. Butler has him. You know, Butler now just has to just figure, just keep the momentum, lock up on defense a little bit, get a couple stops. Hey, well, that's a significant foul on Thompson. He's mm -hmm. second. At the midway point of the first half, contested look here with Coles. And he'll shoot free throw. Well, and it's a different pace when Aaron Thompson exit the game. Now you're asking Bolden and Harris to kind of be the major ball handlers a little bit more. Um, not the same kind of authoritative figure at the point guard position to get guys in certain positions to get get the ball up early in the shot clock to execute the offense so let's keep our eye on the score and the time yeah. when thompson left the game to to when he's able to get back in samuels knocks down free throws uh, he'll take a seat Three-point lead for Villanova. Conference opener for Butler. Game two in Big East play for Villanova. A little zone defense right here. Just like a 2-3 zone by Villanova. Justin Moore, or rather, uh, that is Miles Wilmoth, I beg your pardon, for Butler, who knocks down the three, and the Bulldogs have tied it. Nice execution that time by Butler, being patient against the zone, moving it back, and Wilmoth able to... Knock in that three. Very short from Moore and the rebound for the Bulldogs. There's Bolden in transition off the mark from three. Eric Dixon, the rebound for Villanova. Moore on the drive. 
Later. Bye. Moore kept him the whole time. <laughs> Justin was determined to get that up. Probably not the offensive possession you wanted. And Butler couldn't take advantage of it. Uh, one and done for the Bulldogs, who were 9 for 12 before that miss. As Gillespie slows things down. Whistle away from the ball here. It'll be a turnover for the Wildcats. Eric Dixon. Tied at 24. Set by John Michael Malloy, who's in the game, fades away, uh, can't hit. The pace is kind of slowed down. Gillespie knocks it down for the top of the arc. Five points now for Gillespie. Villanova has the lead. And, and, you know, that was the reverse. It's kind of secondary brace. Usually it's Gillespie. You got the trailer as a big coming in. You feed him. He has an open three. That time, Robson Earl was able to bring it up. And then here comes Gillespie walking to, walking into a nice open three-point shot. That's the versatility of this Villanova squad. Harris steps back. He from deep, pulled down by Caleb Daniels. And some uh, Bulldogs have right up offensively. Two plus minutes without a point. And Villanova extends the lead on a three by Caleb Daniels. Timeout. Of all Jordan, the Bulldogs trailing by their largest margin tonight. Villanova now up by six. After the make from Daniels. Uh, welcome back. Uh, the Wildcats kind of finding their rhythm, offensively settled in a little bit. Here's an example of a play that's well executed by Villanova. The patience now, the ball moves left and right. Jeremiah Earl, he's freezing right here. Let's see this. Now you're able to get the ball over the top, okay, because you have excellent spacing around the perimeter. It's an easy pass, but great work early by Earl to be able to get down, seal, present an arm to throw the ball to, and then complete the play. Nine points. The first three games came out of the gate really strong. Average about 20 per game. It's petered out the last couple, but scored double figures three times this year as a nice touch in tight. He does. He does. You know, and one thing about Butler's keep an eye on this too. Early on with the ball movement, they got open shots without it being contested. The last four or five possessions, they're now taking more contested shots. Is that a matter of Villanova adjusting or Butler losing a little bit of their patience on the offensive end. Wildcats on a 13-3 run. A miss from Bolden. Another defensive rebound for Villanova. One and done, though, on the other end. Almost the rebound for the Bulldogs. See if Butler can get an easy shot on this possession right here or get themselves to the free throw line just to see the ball come through the net. Ton. Their opening game, 24 free throw attempts against Western Michigan. Here's Harris sliced into the rim, couldn't get it to go. The putback goes for Jacoby Coles. Uh, again, the dribble penetration that sometimes you want to give up that three. You want to force the defense to have to guard you. And those didn't, didn't grab it the first time, but able to finish inside. And that's the kind of basket you need to kind of quell the momentum of, of the Wildcats. Already equaled his total. As Butler debut off the bench, pulls with four points. Wow. Jermaine Samuels somehow kept his pivot foot and was able to lay it in. Tight quarters. Michael Malloy running in tightly. And again, Aaron Thompson has been on the bench with those two fouls for Butler. This is a jump ball. Possession goes back to Villanova. Key point we talked about. When Thompson left the game, how the rhythm, the pace would turn. Defensively, active hands here by Samuels, able to get his hands inside, knock it, knock it down, and get on the floor. 
And we talked about Thompson not being the scorer, but he's the orchestrator of the offense. You know, and that you do miss at times when guys are not accustomed to being in that role, you know, for the majority of the game. So it's tough when he's, you know, next to the coach on the sideline. Wider back in for Villanova. Here's Eric Dixon. Dixon back out. Timer inside of seven. Justin Moore drives right of the lane. Righty finish. No rebound for the Bulldogs. Strong rebound that time by Enzi. Bolton rises from three short. There's Enzi with another four. This time in the offensive end, but he spiked it off the left foot of Eric Dixon, turning it over back to Villanova. Fifth turnover for Butler. You start to wonder, too, as we get later in the half, how much conditioning has to do with kind of the fall off of the production and accuracy that we saw early on with the Bulldogs. Thank your pardon. That is their sixth turnover, equaling their total against Western Michigan. And they're open. Foul here. Throws against the Bulldogs. That should be a one and one. It is. Gillespie at the line to take it. Going to build on his six point lead for Villanova. And we haven't mentioned Collins' name a lot. But yet and still, this Villanova team is up six, has a chance to go up. It, it did, you know, I talk about this all the time, Alex. That when you're a key player like Colin Gillespie, preseason, all Big East, could be an All-American, he's a point guard. He's going to have the ball in his hands. He doesn't have to force anything. He kind of feels how the game is going. And when he needs to be able to make an impact with a shot, he's able to take it. If not, he's running the offense. And that's the beauty of being an older player of understanding when I can go, when I can pull back and feel the rhythm of the offense to understand how you, how and when you need to make an impact. We talked to Jay Wright yesterday. He said he's been a confident player more so than in years past. Decisive. Boy, he defends his butt off. That's, he said that over and over to us the other day. Especially in a season that for Philadelphia, they, even at 5-1, and one, they don't feel like they've played their best ball. Many times we've seen the Jay Wright team kind of get through early on. They win games, but really not into their rhythm yet. Oh, Kenzie cleans up the mess underneath. Let's <laughs> speak about rhythm that time. Colin, because we tried to take the charge, but unfortunately didn't get it. Better yet, better for Butler. Is he able to scoop it up? Easy, too. But the Villanova team, they get better as the year goes on. I mean, and they get into a rhythm offensively and defensively. Now it's flowing like a machine. And again, these are different times where practice wasn't there. So they're going to be a little rusty, like all of the teams. A couple eyebrows raised. That lost to Virginia Tech, but they bounced back nicely. They won three straight entering today. A nice win on the road. True road game at Texas. Yeah. Shaka Smart squad. Nice feed to Bolden. Picked up his dribble in a difficult spot, though. And Justin Moore all over him. Bolden from way outside. Comes up short. Battle for the loose ball. It'll be an over the back against Marquise Hastings. Butler struggling from the field, but Bolden and Enzi combining to lead him in scoring. The kill along with you. Yeah, you know, Superman again. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Dart downstairs real quick, change up the wardrobe. Keep it fresh. Yeah. Obviously, you know, shame, no, no fans in these buildings here, but uh, still just a beautiful job they've done renovating this place a couple years ago. This is the third year post-renovation. Villanova's played so well here. But actually, in some ways, you know, watching the, the Georgetown game the other day that, that Nova played and seeing just these the old gyms that yeah. these teams used to play in. I know Seton Hall's back at their old facility. Like, you know, sometimes it's nice to come back to these old buildings and uh, play a little ball. Well, I, you know, my era was in the older arenas before yeah. you got to the mega big arena. So the, the sense and feel, the smells, the the old benches behind the, you know, the uh, benches, the, actually the wooden benches where the students sat at. It was, just, it was just a different feel. And I understand that in today's world, money is an issue. You make it bigger, better sometimes. Uh, but it's still nostalgic. It feels good when you can get, like, 10,000 fans, oh, yeah. and it's, like, they're right up on you. Villanova 
they, they packed this place. 6,500 is the list of capacity. <laughs> they believe me, they get every single one that they can in this building when, when times are normal. When you're in a national down. program like this, the bigger the better. Yeah. National, you know, more people can come see you play. So that's the cost benefit yeah. of winning a lot. Play down the sports <laughs> facility, the Wells Fargo Center, usually. Thompson off the mark back in the game here. Remember, we were talking about the impact of him leaving. Well, it was only a one-point game when he left. The elbow up six, and the flow was totally different as well. Beautiful footwork that time by Jeremiah inside. And Dixon able to wedge his way in to get an offensive rebound. Again, we talked about the conditioning side of it. And sometimes being a step slow allows your opponent to get in front of you. Again, it's, it's something that this Butler team is going to have to continue to play through in order to get the conditioning back to where they need, really need it to be. Wildcats in the double bonus now. They can build on his lead. Butler, after starting the game, 9 of 11 from the field. They are 2 for their last 10. Well, you, you knew Butler was going to, you know. Well, let me take that back. Georgetown was able to shoot, but then Villanova made a run late in the game and knocked down shots. You knew Butler was going to stay that hot, but a lot of it had to do with their shot selection kind of waned off from the efficiency that we saw early in the game. Let's see if they can kind of get a little momentum here. In the, you know, before they go into the second half. I wonder if that conditioning you, does play a part. And it's going to be the case for any team that takes a pause. Mm -hmm. When you come back, I mean, Butler is coming back. We talked about it right at the teeth of Big East plate. And then you've got Indiana. We'll talk about their schedule here. It's it's amazing that they got to navigate like four games in uh, about an eight-day period. Well, you went from not playing right. to all of a sudden now it's just jam-packed with games. Exactly. Which is... You know, it, it's tough on the coaching staff, too, because here's the thing. You want to be able to play, but you want to be able to correct bad habits and teach. And when you're playing multiple games like that, you don't have enough time to be on the practice court to kind of work these things out. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a catch-22. Got Indiana coming up this weekend. Then DePaul hasn't even played a game, period, Big right. East or otherwise. Uh -huh. Imagine their conditioning, oh my you know, gosh. right now. I mean, just it's just in Providence, Providence. Little home and home series. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is Enzi at the line. Robinson Earl picked up the foul, his second. And Bryce Enzi, four points, four boards in the early going. Top returning rebounder for the Bulldogs. Been hit in the front end. Cats without a field goal for the last three plus minutes now. Slater. Jermaine Samuels. He attacks and scores. Six points now for the senior. Well, the ball swung again. That opened up the driving lane that Samuels was able to take advantage of on Malloy. Just patient. One dribble, head down. Easy finish for him at the rim. Largest lead for Villanova. As we approach two minutes to play in the first half. High off the glass. Thompson's attempt wouldn't drop. There's a foul after the fact on Villanova. And we go back to that Samuels play again. To be, to be able to isolate up top, use his quickness, and then be creative to go up underneath the arm of Malloy and finish. And Samuels is aggressive like that. I mean, he gives you, he adds another dimension. We saw it a lot last year when he's really felt confident in his offensive game and sometimes he can you know lose a little bit of that and, and Jay Wright has and the coaches have to get on him they, listen it's okay you missed a few shots get back into it because he's a guy offensively when he's gone especially if he's knocking down shots he adds another dimension to the offense for the Wildcats crept into his free throws this year just 10 of 16 for the line is boy NZ comes up empty and it's a rebound for Villanova out of that scramble. This could be a big swing. No points from the strike. We'll see what the Wildcats do. A minute 53 to go in the half. Elbow 
In there from John Michael Malloy. Eric Dixon trying to clear some room. Attention to detail. Understanding that now you're in the penalty. Mm -hmm. Instead of taking long jump shots, you continue to attack off the dribble and put the onus on the officials to be able to call contact. So the last two plays, smart. Now you got to finish the free yeah. throw when you get there, but you're able to get yourself to the line in this particular instance from Dixon. Eric Dixon, redshirt freshman from Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. And it's 11 points now, the lead for Villanova. I think it's very important if you brought, but you want to keep this lead under double digits. You came out the gate, you felt good about yourself, you got down, you know, it, you know, one or two points doesn't seem like a lot, but mentally it really does to be able to get this lead down just like that. Thompson and one. Well, that's what he did against Western Michigan, a game that wound up being tight down the stretch. Yeah, with we'll change of direction that time, able to semi-euro step in between Dixon. And I think that might have been Slater right there. And then and this is one of the things that Thompson said coming into this year, he wanted to do a better job of, which was finishing at the rim. Now you got to finish at the free throw line when you have an opportunity. These are missed opportunities for the Bulldogs. Kind of stymied the momentum. Five, the five. Yeah, five misses now from the free throw line. And Will Lesby straight on comes up short. And Bolden gets fouled. These free throws, though, they are, I don't want to say they're piling up yet for Butler, but you're going to need every single point you can. It's the usually stingy Villanova team, Jair Bolden, at the line here. Well, it was an interesting stat that the Butler was 11-1 last year when they were able to outshoot their opponents from the free throw line. And, and you do that by being smart to be able to get to the line, but then the ability to finish once you get there, <laughs> of course, is the key. Well, Bolden, 14 points, first half. Bulk of that coming right out of the gate. And there you go in the second. See so if they can get a defensive stop here. Now, you know. Again, being in the penalty, Villanova's very adept at drawing contact because of their constant movement. Caleb Daniels slicing through the D and finishes with the left hand. And that play was drawn up. It was called for Daniels to be able to isolate because if you looked at the spacing, no one crept in. It wasn't movement on the weak side. What they allowed was spacing right in the middle of the court for Daniels to kind of do his thing and go to work. Transfer from Tulane. Leading the Wildcats in field goal percentage. Great switch that time by Slater. And Bolden. Here's Enzo. Driving into the lane. Lost the handle on the deck. And they'll jump it up. Possession arrow favors Butler. But that's game defense that time. And Daniels that time kind of smelled out that drive and was right there as Enzi put the ball and got it below his waist. Now, key places, now there's only six seconds left on the shot clock. Where does Thompson go with it? Bolden. Well, nearly lost his dribble. Bolden having to heave a wild attempt. Skips it off the heel of the rim. Villain over the rebound and got a one second differential. Pretty much they'll hold for the last shot. And they'll call timeout. So use it or lose it. And Jay Wright decides to use it. Now the Wildcats up by nine. Ah, nice hat. What's all this? This, my friend, is what the holidays are all about. Some people love sweaters. Or find shopping a thrill. Other people like running up their electricity bill. It's the nuttiest time of the year, it's true. But it's all about giving. And the best gift is you. Oh, so I'm the gift. <laughs> Keep that guy away from me. Happy holidays from Planters. Nine-point lead for Villanova, and 
through all that we haven't called the name of Colin Gillespie all that much their senior leader big five player of the week honors this week how important was his play in the second half against Georgetown and even though yeah seven points but hasn't had to do very much but he leads in different ways yeah you know vocal demonstrative in getting guys where they need to be on the court, distributing the ball, getting it up ahead in the secondary of fast break opportunities, not always putting the ball in the basket, but it's his leadership that you talked about early is why this Villanova team kind of recovered from a slow start. Final seconds of the half. Gillespie guarded by Harris. And it's an offensive foul. Well, this is an excellent one. play because they wanted to isolate Caleb Daniels once again on Aaron Thompson. Of course, being a great defensive player means you anticipate, you know what your opponent wants to do. That time, a step ahead of the game, so to speak, Thompson able to slide over, take away that potential drive and pick up a charge. I see how big this swing might be. Yeah. Nine. Defensive stop, basket. Yep, nine-point deficit. Could have been double digits. Three seconds. Thompson driving. Gets it to go. How easily momentum can shift. A great defensive play. Thompson talked about finishing better at the rim. Great screen that time by Enzi. And then Thompson able to use his shoulder, create a little space, absorb the contact, finish for two. Oh, that's, that could be significant <laughs> later in the game. Butler had the early lead, 17-10 after the first five minutes. Villanova outscored him 31-17 after that. Cheap halftime coming up with Nova out in front in Philly. steady they're going to be. Well, can they find their rhythm defensively? Now, again, Butler did what they had to do early on, which established themselves. I, I thought they settled a little bit more for those three-point shots contested, not getting some easy basket, but if you look at the score, they were down double digits, able to get some stops at the end, get themselves back into the game. Let's see if that momentum transfers over to the beginning of this second half. A little bit of foul trouble for the Bulldogs. Hastings with three fouls. The big story, though, was Aaron Thompson having to sit for an extended period of time in that first half. With those two fouls, he had five assists in the first ten minutes of the game, but didn't come back in until the final three minutes or so of the half. Well, and that's when they were down double digits, but again, having his presence back on the floor, floor general able to kind of regain a little bit of that offensive and defensive continuity cut into it. So it's very important that he doesn't pick up an early cheap foul, you know, early. And that's why they got him on the side guarding Daniels instead of guarding Gillespie. Jeremiah Robinson Earl, the leading scorer for Villanova, nine points on four of seven shooting in the first half. Villanova has won eight straight conference home openers. And Jay Wright sitting one win shy of 600 for his career. Out of the gate, three in and out from Moore. And it's amazing how the narrative changes. We all knew Coach Wright was an outstanding coach, but until he was able to finally get out of the early upsets as being a you know, highly ranked or you know, seeded team, win that first national championship, the narrative changed, and then you win that second one within three years. Now you're in a whole different category in regards to how you're viewed and portrayed when he's been a great coach all the time. Villanova's won at least a share of the regular season. The title in the Big East, five of the last six seasons. Skips off the rim from Samuels, foul underneath on the loose ball, being over the back. Uh, it's, it's always hard trying to block out a, a player that stays active. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah Robinson Earl understands that it's, so instead of staying stuck in you know, in concrete to one spot, he's always moving. That's why he's able to get an offensive rebound or keep an extended possession for the Wildcats. Twenty back on the timer as Moore feeds this around to Daniels. Crossover from Samuels. And a short shot won't go. The defense that time by Coles. Straight up in the air. Didn't commit, didn't reach down, which is a habit of a lot of players to try to strip the ball down low. Good discipline. Thompson.
Jason. Oh, that's a tough oh, shot. The teardrop goes. That is a tough shot. I mean, Aaron has been working on that, that kind of floater from about 12, 13 feet. I mean, you know how much touch you got to have from the middle of the floor to be able to make that shot. Butler within five. And Enzi picks up a foul here. See, I, I can see you working on this. This this is, can be a part of your game if you really concentrate on it. Seriously, you can do that. I think you can. Me? Yeah. Oh, you're looking at me. That's what I said. I said, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you, you got more faith than I do. <laughs> uh, see how easy it looked when Aaron Townsend sure. did it? Yeah. Yeah, just do that. <laughs> just do that. <laughs> and see, that's his third foul. That might prove to be significant. Yep. Let's see. This is Gillespie. A rise from 17 feet. Bolden the rebound. And Butler looking to chip away again. Here's Bolden. Thompson. He's, you know, it, it, just as you said earlier, Jim, it, it's not that he necessarily has to be the alpha dog, but if Butler needs him to be, he can be. Oh, he can. He's smart. He, he plays with a lot of energy, and, and your teammates tend to follow that. I think that's the important part with Aaron. He's learned over the years that he can lead in different ways and not just putting the ball in the basket. And that just goes from the trust, too, that Coach Jordan and coaching staff have, and, you know, put into his hands. We, we know who you are. This is why we recruited you. We're not expecting you to be, you know, Kamar Baldwin, you know. And he, he accepts his role. Went without a point his first 18 minutes, but has scored eight of Butler's last 10. Highest compliment you could get to, LaVault Jordan said, he'll be a great coach one. No doubt. Daniels short from three. Rebound juggled by Coles and then thrown down by Robinson Earl. Yeah, Samuels may have gotten away with it over the back just by his attempt to keep it alive, tapping the ball forward. Robinson Earl was able to benefit off of that. There's Bolden. Offensive foul. This is one area, too, where I wonder for Butler. Mm -hmm. Remember, they didn't have the ability to bring referees into yeah. camp early on this mm -hmm. year, and that's now three offensive fouls. Pretty similar foul calls, too. Well, you know, when we had the Western Michigan game, that's something that Coach Jordan talked about, was that not being able to have differing opinions and sight lines and people calling different fouls a different way so players can make adjustments to it. doesn't sound like it means a lot, but it does once you get into real game situation. And that time, that was a matter, too, of Samuels just, again, anticipating the move of Bolden, getting there first and taking the charge. Samuels feeds it to the outside and on the other end. Guess who? It's Daniels. Who picks up the offensive and Aaron Thompson the one to get in his way? Well, it, this is tricky too because you, this could be foul number three if he's not there. Yeah. And that time being able to stay disciplined, slide his feet, and just with Daniels in that little shoulder extend extension causes the foul. Caleb Daniels third foul. All that. Great move from Thompson. Couldn't finish. Moore comes away with a rebound. Villanova up tempo the other way as this gets tipped out. Justin Moore, sophomore. He mentioned from the DMV area. Went to Vaunted DeMatha. Great prep program. Oh, yeah. Morgan Wooten. Back in the day, Gerard Mustaf. Pass of 88. Samuels contested look. Roy was there for Butler. Bulldogs trailing by five. And Aaron Thompson coming off the pick. A reset. Bolden mm. knocks it down from three. First time we've called his name in a while. He's up to 18 points. All right, listen, Dixon was trying to play the drive a little bit. 
And just that little quick move by Bolden, just to free up enough space. Think about it, Eric Dixon, the 6'8". Able to clear enough space to get a clean look at it and knock it in. Robinson Earl with the answer on the short corner. Right. What a benefit is to have when you clear that short corner, and those, you got better spacing now. Robinson Earl is able to go one-on-one -on -one instead of forcing a little jab step, a little 12-foot jump shot. Keep it simple. 13 points now. He had a season high 28 win over Arizona State in that Bubbleville event, Mohegan. <laughs> Gillespie, the old football player, nearly jumped the lane and tips this out of play. But Butler climbing back into this game. A three from Jire Bolden. Get him within four. Four-point lead for Villanova. Looking to get the 2-0 oh in Big East play. Butler just their second game of the year. But a the sluggish start for Nova out of the break. Two of nine from the field to begin the second half. Why? Well, and, and, you know, just because Nova has, have had more game games, they, they're still trying to figure out who they are as a team as well. Now, it's a lot different than Butler not playing. But, you know, the offense isn't as smooth yet. Defense is not as connected. But this Butler team plays a style similar to Villanova without three-point shooting, but very disciplined in what they do, so they force him to shoot. Thompson late in the shot clock. And this is everything. Every second violation for Butler. And to that point, Jay Wright was telling us it almost feels like these games, because nobody understands me, they almost feel like preseason scrimmages still. And you have to wrap your head around the fact this is Big East play. And even though there are a lot of teams that could probably say they're not where they want to be just yet, maybe these wins are still important. His zone defense here by Butler in this possession. Skip pass later. Extra pass. Gillespie, no. And Thompson tracks down the board. Good change of defense that time. Kind of made Villanova think keep the ball on the perimeter. Coles comes up short. A little runner. And Villanova has the rebound. Moore driving left to the lane, scoops it in. Beautiful hesitation move that time. And because of the three-point shooting in the corner, the help wasn't available, opened up the lane, and Moore able to use his offhand to finish softly off the glass. Nine points now for the sophomore. That's a three from Chuck Harris. No, offensive board, Wilma, and he's right there. To put it back in. Beautiful offensive rebound that time, able to catch, quickly spring back up and finish. It's the Independent Schools Athlete of the Year in high school in Rhode Island. As Robinson Earl connects from three. I tell you what, last year was questions okay, offensively, how is he going to evolve? What's going to be his game? And we're, we're really starting to see the mid-range game, but now the confidence from behind the three-point line, we know that he can, you know, post up and score inside. And again, the evolution and player development here at, at you know, Villanova uh, is just tremendous. Wild take from Harris. And he'll shoot free throws. Well, right here, maintaining his spacing in the corner, knowing you have Dixon inside. And, you know, as his confidence grows now, def defenders are going to want to take that away, providing more space on the court. Third foul for Eric Dixon. Sends Harris to the strike. Samuels back in for Villanova. And Nicole Swider. Thompson will take a quick breather. Splits the pair. Six-point lead for Villanova. Four crosses over. Late dish. Samuels kicks it out. Daniels off the mark from three. Rebound for Butler. And that's a, when you kind of a little too unselfish. Actually, Samuels had a layup inside, but again, playing unselfish basketball, kicked it out. Daniels had a clean look at it, not able to knock it in. Miles Tate. 
comes into the game for Butler. 12 and navy blue. Freshman as Harris is unable to get it off the backboard. There's a late foul here. Robinson Earl gets tagged with the foul. The first great defense by Samuels. Keep his man in front of him and then Robinson Earl tracking that missed shot. Foul's actually on Coles for Butler. That's his third. And it continues a night of foul trouble for the Bulldogs. Man, you don't have a deep bench, so you, you have to massage the players you do have to not pick up any unnecessary fouls and play with what you got. You can't dig until you, you bench too much. Butler. They're a very young team, right? Swider back out. Samuels driving oh. baseline hole. Look at that. Tough finish. Got hit on the way. But Villanova's so disciplined. Swider two jump stop, kicks it back out. Samuels, Jr. Samuel Jr. just pump fake, get to the basket. It seems it really is simple in, in what you do. You know, with Villanova, you watch them operate. That's why they're able to be as efficient as they are. But it's just the little things that they do to create opportunities for their teammates or when they get a chance to get to the basket or get a shot, they can create ones for themselves. Wilmoth with the foul. <laughs> as Hastings checks out. Samuels. The free throw up to eight points. An eight point lead for Villanova. A 9 3 run. As Tate, we heard in the preseason how fast he is. But in a bit of trouble, it's out of the double team. And Bolden walks. And it was easy for Justin Moore because of Bolden's ability to shoot and how hot he got to go for the jab step and the pump fake. But he stayed disciplined, you know, and that, those little things of understanding that, coaches always say, stay down, don't go, the, don't go for the fake. But when a guy's been hot, it's easier to go for it. That time, Justin maintains his discipline. So go the other way. Justin Moore. Oh, hand check, extending the elbow. Actually, they uh, call a travel on So that brings us to a stoppage. We'll step aside with Nova up by eight. Let's go, Bucks. Starts Let's go. at noon on Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern on Friday. What a bummer this year. No Michigan-Ohio State yeah. game. I mean, just, again, uncontrollable, but that... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. I'm with you. The committee's decisions, let's just say, uh, this year might be a little bit easier than, than in years past yeah. if their current rankings are to be believed. Eight-point lead for Villanova. It was an offensive foul on Justin Moore that led us to the timeout. Bryce Enzi tried to pivot on Cole Swider. Swider got a piece of him. Yeah, help came a little bit late because Enzi was able to back down Gillespie when he had the mismatch that time. Just a little late once Enzi got into his move. That's what he's talking about. Right okay. that, remember, <laughs> yes. Coach Jordan talked about <laughs> free throw wise. A lot of balls hit the backboard. Now that one counted, so I, I it's good. I hate to laugh on that, but yeah, that's exactly what he said. Okay, there you that's, go. That's a little bit. It, it, it's interesting that that's one of the things you just you lose feel, right? Mm -hmm. A couple weeks off, and you're hitting the I, backboard with your free throws. Oh, I gave you an example. In the NBA during the All Star break, you may be off three or four days, and when you get back to that first practice, you feel like you don't have rhythm. And speaking of rhythm, <laughs> we haven't called Cole's name, Swider's name, that often, but right on cue off of a. A little ball reverse, reversal, able to step in rhythm and knock in that three. Swider with five now. And the lead is nine for Villanova. 
Enzi going to work underneath. And Enzi chipping back in for Butler with six. Well, and I like that Butler re ran the exact same play. They knew that Enzi would get switched on to, or Gillespie would get switched on to Enzi. He was able to take advantage of it once again. Robinson Hurl in and out from three. Bolden the rebound. Bolden the leading scorer for the Bulldogs tonight. The transfer from South Carolina. Wilma back up top. And Aaron Thompson on the drive hit the side of the backboard. Might have been altered by Jermaine Samuels defensively. Here's Gillespie circling. Nice dish. And one for Jermaine Samuels coming in late. But two things. One, Thompson's kind of inability to be comfortable shooting that jump shot puts the defense at a disadvantage on the opposite end of the court. Gillespie smartly pushes it up. Secondary break. And you know if you cut to the basket, Colin will find you. Excellent recognition that time by Jermaine Samuels. What a finish. Now into double figures. Samuels, who averaged about 11 points per game last year. Now to season high 10. Make it 11. And the lead is back to double figures for the Cats. Some empty possessions. A little bit by Butler, but, you know, got to stay with it once again. Harris brings it up. A slew of freshmen that have been brought in this Butler team. Very young group. Bolden, senior transfer coming in. The fresh faces here, including Wilmoth. Count it. And a foul. Well, excellent read, misdirection play. The ball is able to be swung quickly and. Backdoor cut Samuels just a little too late as he rotated over. Wilmoth able to recognize that the opening was there instead of staying married to the corner. Cut back door. Third foul for Samuels. And again, the Bulldogs are leaving points on the table at the strike. Well, I mean, in the win against Western Michigan, you know, Butler only shot 62% from the free throw. They got to get to the line more. So I guess they are on pace in some ways. 16 attempts now from the stripe is Bolden again has been the focal point of the Butler offense. Well, I mean, those missed opportunities, you got an eight-point lead, so you make three or four of those now. It's yeah. only four points. You're right there. So that you know makes a big difference when you're not able to capitalize off a of good offense to get yourself to a free throw line. You kind of let you bailing out your opponent when you're not able to get up there, especially for free throw shooters that customarily can knock them in. Well, as Samuels does here. Fourth foul on Jacoby Coles. So the freshman from Texas will sit. Nova buttoned up until that miss on free throws. High point lead. Bulldogs just hanging still. Mm -hmm. Pass goes awry. Enzi had to reach out to grab it, and it gets away. Well, good overplay that time by Robinson Earl. And sometimes that's when the little ball fake comes into effect. You know, you're already committing to the pass, but you're not reading the defense. Hence, you know, another turnover by the Bulldogs. Tenth of the night. Going over with 12 points off those 10 Butler turnovers. Gillespie swings it out to Swider. No. Thompson the rebound. Numbers for Butler if they want to push. Harris a three. Yes. And a little miscommunication that time by the Wildcats in transition. I think it was Caleb Daniels and Colin Gillespie were kind of caught in between, and smartly, Chuck Harris was able to line his feet up, shoulders, 
Let it go. Not in the big time three. Now you're down only six points. See if you get a defensive stop. Uh, that's too easy, easy for Daniels, yeah. But, and, that, and that pass came from, you know, top of the three-point line, zip right inside. So, yeah, your man may have got picked on the back side, but where's the pressure on the ball to take that those sight lines away? Here's Enzi going to work. Robinson Earl guarding him, and Enzi comes up empty. Just that quickly, Villanova can extend it back to a double-digit lead. Tough shot for Daniels. Look at Colin yes. and hustled it on Enzi. Slap it away. Gillespie certainly forced yes. that turnover. And there's Daniels who didn't have to go very far. Corner three, an 11 point lead now with Daniels up to eight points. Timeout taken by Butler. The lead was down to six moments ago. But a three from Caleb Daniels extends it to 11. Leading score for Villanova with 18 tonight. Yeah, yeah, you know, the reigning freshman of the year, you knew his offense was going to progress, but what areas would improve? Well, one, the ability to step back and have confidence shooting from behind the arc. Mid-range game is there. He's learned to be a bulldog on the block, getting rebounds, but... I think within the offense in Villanova, there's not a lot of pressure put on him to lead the team, so he's able to mature at the rate that he needs to in order to be as efficient. And this game is going to continue, continue, continue to grow and blossom within this system. Well, here's the thing. Top five rebounding Big East, second straight season again. It's early yet for the sample size. Right. But now he, he enters the day just outside the top ten in scoring in the Big East coming into the day. 11th in the league, despite just nine points, 36 minutes at Georgetown last week. Well, but I love the patience on his side and understanding who he is. A lot of freshmen come in with, you know, big-time status and want to score right away. He wasn't like that. He understood his role. He knew his time would come to be, see Bolden right there with the shot, involved in the offense more when he felt more comfortable. When the coaching staff trusted him more, and you see that evolution right now early into this season. Daniels came up short. Enzi leading the run out. Quick return pass to Enzi, and then he threw it away. Now the Bulldogs might be forcing it a little bit. Bolden forced the shot a moment ago, and then another turnover. Their 12th of the night. Point lead for the Wildcats at the Pavilion. You know what? It's another steady performance. They just it's, it's like a broken record of this Villanova team, and I know Jay Wright feels like they, they still have another year left in them, but if, uh, if the depth and the quality that we've seen from up and down, I mean, there are, what, seven different guys who have five or more points in this game. Well, I mean, you know, we, we've seen this program when they've been sexy, when they've had explosive sure. players, you know, around the perimeter, but we've seen this team be solid, too, and what they do is methodical offensively, Defensively, they take advantage of the miscues and mistakes of their opponents, and that's what really good teams do. I was looking just at the numbers here. I mean, Josh Hart is not walking through that door, right? Uh -huh. They don't have a single player top 10 scoring in the Big East uh -uh. this year. But collectively, at a, as a group, the way they create opportunities for each other is what makes them so tough to guard because you can't just key in on one individual. Prime example. Yep. I mean, that play out of a timeout to be able to execute it is one thing to get the shots you want is something else. And again, the patience. And then also, it's, it's just the little fundamentals. The jump stop, bounce pass inside. You catch with two hands, identify where you're at, draw contact. Again, looks simple, but these are the things that, you know, this, these players work on and coaches that every yeah. day. And you get a guy who's like an eighth man off the bench, <laughs> Brandon Slater. This is the first free throw. And, and that's not to say that other programs don't do it, but when you, it's something different when you watch Villanova with the things that they do that just stand out. <laughs> the lead remains 11. Thompson 
And Butler's not going to go down without a fight. No. Especially if Thompson has something to say about it. No, he identified that he had, one, a bigger opponent, but two, that the baseline was open and Enzi providing a little space in the switch. The problem is Jeremiah Robinson Earl was on top of that screen, so he couldn't get back in time. And smartly, Aaron maintained his dribble and got the contact. Third foul for Robinson Earl. And Aaron Thompson is strike. A great free throw shooter last year. Under 60%. Gillespie back in for Villanova. Thompson, we mentioned, a career-high 21 in their opener. As he knocks them both down, the lead down to nine. With 6.46 to go. Aaron Thompson in double figures now. Cole sits. Marquise Hastings back in with three fouls. Gillespie. Boy, he had all the room in the world. Yeah, but Enzi has to be up on that screen because once you lay back and Colin is able to get his momentum going right, he just stepped right into a 12-foot jump shot. Again, you got to know your scouting report and who you're guarding. And when Colin has the ball like that, you got to be up on that screen to contest that shot. Thompson. He's, he's going to be a one-man show if he has to be. 12 points now for the senior. And his 94th career start today. Yeah, but Butler needs to get consecutive stops. That's the thing right there. You want to cut into the lead, you can't go basket for basket. Again, that middle pick and roll, better defense that time. But you need multiple stops on this end of the court. Samuels, boy, you want to talk about a stop. Bryce Enzi, straight up, came up with one. Bulldogs reset with Harris. Bolden, the quieter in the second half. We've seen him knock it down from three tonight. Eight to shoot. Bolden looking for room. None given. Gillespie all over him. Bolden forced the look. Rebound for the Wildcats. And that's outstanding defense that time by Villanova in particular. Colin Gillespie when he switched on to Bolden to just maintain his body upright, slide his feet, contest the shot. Again, they wanted to try to get some, you know, if they could get it inside to Enzi. But look at this. Slide, anticipate, body is there, doesn't reach down. Now, right there, a lot of players would reach at the end and try to get a steal. But again, the discipline on the defensive end by the senior Gillespie took away that offensive possession from the Bulldogs. That's the kind of defense that Jay Wright has been glowing about from Gillespie this season. Well, it shows you, too, that you don't have to be quick of feet in order to stay with someone that may have more speed. It's just the angles in which you choose to take, where you push your opponent and anticipate, you know, where they want to get to. And then finish the play as clean as can be. Chuck Harris with the foul, sending Justin Moore to the line. And Moore now with 11. Which equals the Villanova lead. Just over five minutes to play in Philadelphia. Now here on Robinson Earl, I believe. And if that's the case, that's his fourth. Butler in the bonus. So Villanova's going to have to juggle personnel down the stretch. Robinson Earl sits. Bryce Enzi at the line. 0 of 3 from the stripe tonight. Here you go. See, the jinx works both ways. It does. Step up there, feel confident. May have missed early, but now you got a chance to knock it in to see if he can knock in the second one. What allows you to do is set your defense, get back. <laughs> Ten point deficit for Butler as Villanova looks to get to 2 0. 
In conference play, Thompson reaching in, looking for the steal. Got a piece of Gillespie instead. Right, see, and, th and then Aaron knows better than that. Yeah. That's the discipline I'm talking about because you got the stop you wanted in regards to Colin not being able to get to the rim, but now you bail him out at the end with the reach. You put Colin Gillespie to the line, you shoot 77%. Okay, <laughs> so that's the discipline you need to beat this Villanova team. Ten points for Gillespie tonight. Thompson with his third foul. Those are two experienced leaders in their respective teams. Gillespie hits them both. Lead is 12 for Villanova. Largest of the night. Zipping it at the top side. Mm. Baseline. Wow. What a finish. Uh -oh. Came down awkwardly. And I think it was well after the finish. I think it was a collision here. Yeah. And he didn't see it coming, which. Oh, boy. If that is anything serious, that is a significant moment well, for after, Butler. Yeah, after the play, let's see if he bumps knees going back. Because it was right which you can't see it from that angle right yeah. there yeah weird and awkward angle as he's retreating the athletes at this level know their bodies better than most. And Thompson, he knows how serious this is. He knew it right away. Oh, boy. Well, you just hope that it is nothing and I'll keep him out long term. He'll take a seat here, won't head back to the locker room as they through a quick evaluation. Yeah. Keep our eye and see if they keep him on the sideline, which could be a good sign uh, for Aaron and the Bulldogs. Unfortunately, injuries are a part of this game, especially those kind right there that kind of just happen within the, yep. the moment. You turn, you made a basket, and it's a small collision. And it doesn't take much because these bodies are moving, you know, very quickly. So with Thompson out, how does that impact the Butler rotation? Right away, Gillespie. And Thompson was on him previously. And Gillespie unabated to the rim. Not able to take advantage of a freshman that time, a little hesitation move. And again, again, because you have proper spacing, no one was there to kind of come over and collapse defensively to kind of take or even contest that shot at the end. Harris a three. That swirls in. How important might three-point shooting be down the stretch for Butler? They've got to make up this gap with under four minutes to go. Man, a good response by Harris that time. You know, not able to stop Colin that time. That time he was able to catch and shoot right in the corner. Again, this end of the court for Butler is where they have to get it done to really cut into this lead. Career high 11 now for Harris. A foul is called here. That'll send us to a timeout. Colin Gillespie. Once again, leading the way for Villanova, 13 on the night. Historic facility in Los Angeles coming up after we're done here. This is the story tonight. Aaron Thompson, one of the best guys to wear a Butler uniform in the role of point guard, but also one of the best on-ball on -ball defenders in the Big East. And, Semi-finalist last year for Naismith Defensive Player of the Year, but a knee injury apparently and is heading back down the tunnel. Need to see it. Yeah. And, uh, hopefully the diagnosis of what we see is not as a, not as serious. You know, for him and the Bulldogs, it's, especially being a senior. You know, just just anytime you get injured, but you know when you're near the end of your career, you're expecting big things. And injury takes place. It just. 
is devastating for not only the young men, but for the team as well. So prayers out and hopefully it's nothing as serious. Gillespie at the free throw line here. He has scored seven of Villanova's last nine points. <laughs> How about it? Like when you think about it, it's quietly just getting it done. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because when we're talking to Coach Wright, he said, you're talking about having Archie, I mean, Ryan Archie Diacono, Jalen Brunson. He said, out of those two, and that's not taking anything away from him, he's, he considers Colin Gillespie his best leader. You know, he said it because he, he thinks more like a coach when he's on the court. There are guys going to get guys in position and tell them what to do. Colin is going to explain a little bit more why you need to be there and what you need to do. Another turnover from Butler. That's their 13th. But Gillespie, Bob Cousy watch list. Coming off a great performance, 18 points, especially second half against Georgetown. Again, Villanova might have might not have the flashy scores that they've had in some years past, but it'll be just as tough to handle. Preseason poll favored them to win the Big East regular season. Daniels to Gillespie. Got it from three. And he continues his tear in the second half. Well, and never in a rush. And that time, Daniels got buried deep within. But already, Colin was peeling over from the weak side to get right in the vision to get that shot. Never in a rush offensively, even with the shot clock going down. Offensive foul, Jacoby Coles. Coles this time head down, turns his back, and right there, now that's a little acting right there yeah. by Samuels. But I, again, if you can get away with it, it, and the official is on the baseline and only sees the contact, well, you know, that's part of being a, in, I would say, a, what, what's the word we want to use for defense? Intelligent play? Intelligent, but you got to be a little savvy. bit more savvy. There we go. Yeah. Sneaky. Yeah. Hey, the, the lesson I've always heard is don't put yourself, you're a defensive player, don't put yourself in a position like that where right. uh, things like that could happen. Uh -huh. Now Villanova pouring it on now. Gillespie. The game high 18. Including... Just a tremendous second half, 11 points. Rebound here for the Bulldogs, 2.15 to go. Lead 14 for Villanova, Enzi well off the mark from three. And the Wildcats, and smell it now for a 2-0 start. They've won eight straight conference home openers, and there's the exclamation point from Justin Moore. Timeout. Villanova. Seven in the country coming into the Knights. They have their second Big East win of the year. Research shows people remember commercials with nostalgia. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance, here's one that'll really take you back. Wow! What'd you get, Ryan? It's customized home insurance from Liberty Mutual. What does it do, bud? It customizes our home insurance so we only pay for what we need. And what did you get, Mike? I got a bike. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. All right, well, Saturday was supposed to be a big day. Big non-conference tilt that was set up at Madison Square Garden. Going to be on Big Fox, but Virginia and their issues with COVID, they're still in a pause. They were the preseason number four ranked team in the country. They last, they last played December 4th. They're still having issues there, but Villanova, with whoever they play, they're going to try to fill that game. Well, then head back at a conference play with Marquette. On the 23rd. Yeah, and you, you like to keep it from a continuity perspective to be able to play, especially when you're feeling good, get into a rhythm again. Some, some things are out of your control like this year, but if you can fill that gap, fill the game, and it may not be an op opponent like Virginia, but it gives you an opportunity to go out and get some reps. So hopefully they'll be able to 
uh, replace that uh, with a, a worthy opponent. One thing I will say from this year, I hope that teams do schedule locally more than they have yeah, in, in the past. past. I mean, see, mm -hmm. obviously in Philadelphia with the Big Five, you get St. Joe's and Temple every year. They had to cancel one of those games recently. St. Joe's would be available. We'll see if they were able to set that up again. But no reason for these teams to be hopscotching across the country. There are a lot of great no. local games you can schedule. Totally agree. Harris, Travis. You, you know, I know it's tough right now. We look at the final, I mean, not the final score, but the score right now, down 16, Butler. But, you know, as a coaching staff, you look at some positives you can take away. The beginning of the game, the start, the execution, understanding the challenge of who you're facing was going to be daunting, coupled with the fact that you weren't able to play, condition, practice, do all of those things. So you don't beat your team up after a loss like this. You say, okay, how do we learn and move forward? Here's are the things that we did well. Here's are the things that we need to improve on. Let's get ready to play for our next game. And oh, yeah, good luck against Indiana. Well, yeah, I mean, but again, another step. <laughs> but that's what you need. But you want a stern test to see oh, no doubt. your retention on what you need to do. Now, hopefully, you got you get some outstanding news that Aaron Thompson is fine. Yes. Okay, that's huge from a from a mental perspective. And for Aaron, we're we're hoping that he's okay. Oh, you better believe it. You know, as a basketball former basketball player, you want to. You don't, you don't want to see anybody get hurt. Um, and, you know, you love to see the best players being out there, especially true leaders like that, be able to lead their teams. Well, some things for Butler before kind of, I guess, going back here for Villanova. They'll get the 6-1 and one of the season. Bolden, great start, 4-5. Mm -hmm. of five. And a quiet finish, 1 of 8 after that. You got Miles Wilmoth, the freshman who didn't play against Western Michigan. I thought it had a great night, right? Seven points off the bench. So some things for Butler certainly to, to build off of, but that's the headline, no doubt, will be the status of Aaron Thompson out of this game. Yeah, well, Chuck Harris played well in spurts. Yep. Okay, freshman still kind of getting his feet wet, trying to learn. So, you know, some, again, positives that you want to take out, in particular in a year like this when the landscape is, is, is not going to be stable. It's always going to be changing. So you have to be fluid, not only in what you do on the court, but how you communicate to your players, I think, is to be very important this year. That's about four-plus minutes without a point for Butler. And for Villanova, more of the same. Maybe not the same volume three-point shooting that we've come to expect from the Wildcats. And finally, they, they will wind up with nine about their average, but they did it in different ways tonight. The guys got involved in the scoring. Sneer pass to the tally late. They're going to wind up with one, two, three, four, five, six players with eight or more points for Villanova. Slater, not one of them, but this is a, an efficient and balanced Villanova team. Well, that's all too goes back to recruiting the kind of players you want. Now, again, developing young players, it takes a little bit more time to kind of get the super, superstars that we've seen with this Villanova team. So now this is going to be more of a collective group. You just can't give it to one player and say, just go get it. Colin can at times. But the success of this Villanova team is going to be a collective effort by multiple guys. You're going to see one guy being the leader scorer, maybe one game, and then the next, and then the next. And that's, I think, gives this team the best opportunity to win, and I mean win big. You know, another Big East regular season title, another Big East tournament championship, advancing to the tournament, all those things. But it's going to be a different kind of look and feel for this Villanova team this year, which is okay. Yep. Now it'll be nine straight conference home openers. And for Jay Wright, his 600th career win as a head coach. Villanova takes this one 85-66 over Butler. And they remain terrific in this building where they went 8-0 last season. A few more games than usual to be played here at the Pavilion. But the Wildcats stout as ever at home.
Final score, Villanova 85, Butler 66. For Jim Jackson and our entire Fox Sports crew, this is Alex Faust bidding you a good evening from Philadelphia. Coming up next, PBC Fight Night from Los Angeles on FS1.